Now, your post as head of the GSA, in terms of power, how did that compare with other cabinet positions? Oh, I, I would say uh, <clears throat> it was a very, very powerful position. Uh, very powerful in that uh, I then had the authority to make certain decisions regarding uh, supplies that uh, ministries uh, received, furniture for offices, everything that had to do with the functions of these ministries, agencies of government uh, had to come through my agency. And how did you propose to run that agency when you took over? I, uh, <clears throat> I had read extensively uh, uh, about the operations of the General Services Administration in the United States. And so I set out immediately to try to uh, rein in the, uh, the agency in terms of uh, uh, being able to save money. Uh, at the time that I took over, in fact, before the coup, every ministry, every agency bought its own supply. So, for example, if if one ministry wanted, say, an adding machine, uh, he bought a particular brand. And so, in the government of Liberia at the time, I realized that uh, there were many, many different brands, uh, and this uh, was not serving the best interest of government. So, I then decided to uh, to structure the agency in a way that we will begin to to not just only save money for government, but to uh, try to standardize uh, equipment and other government uh, 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 items across the board. And this, this caused a major problem. But did that policy work? To a great extent it worked. It gave me, and that's what I meant by power, it gave us a lot of power, but it also created a, a lot of enemies. And in putting through those reforms, were you supported by Doe and the PRC? Yes. <coughs> yes. Now, <clears throat> was this some kind of federalized system, Mr. Taylor? Was it centralized? We in our restructuring proposed the centralization of everything. Uh, the argument was made and, uh, and Doe and the, and the People's Redemption Council accepted it that uh, our proposition was this, look, if you standardize, there are several advantages. One, you can buy what we call bulk material uh, at lower rates. The ability to service the equipment across government repairs will be uh, easier because if you are in an office and you have an Adler, for example, they used at that time a lot of Adler machines. If an Adler broke down across the hall and could not be repaired under any condition, it was easy to take parts from one Adler and fix another Adler. But if you are in one room and the guy next door to you is using a cannon, uh, that's it if the, if the machine breaks down. That will save. And so we introduced standardization. We also talked about bulk purchasing. Uh, and that brought about uh, tremendous savings. So in terms of the heads of individual government departments, is it the case that hitherto they had made their purchases on an individual basis? Yes, they, they, and not only made their purchases as individuals, but prices were just so wide apart. Uh, 
one ministry could buy let's say an example let's say a Canon 250 adding machine uh, would be reported for let's just use a, a, a rough figure hundred dollars another agency would probably show two hundred dollars and so this disparity uh, was a major problem because they bought individually and 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 there were no savings and in reality mr. Taylor what was the real root cause of those kind of disparities well uh, let's not mention words uh, here uh, this was just pure evidence of corruption uh, you know to put it bluntly uh, and 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 uh, and coming in and trying to correct it this is what I meant by cause some enemies also why did it cause enemies? You need to spell this out first. Well, well, corruption generally is is when 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 individuals uh, do a lot of things and uh, and, and steal uh, taxpayers' money for, and, and do the wrong things, and so uh, uh, it was a way that people made of they made a living. It was a way that, uh, for example, a government employee working at the at any agency. And that had a monthly salary of let's say two hundred dollars really didn't care if he was in the procurement department because at the end of the day uh, he was making thousands uh, based on the deals he was cutting here and there we got to find out that the invoices that were being reported through the general auditing office uh, were all made up invoices and in fact uh, uh, deals were made apparently where they were reporting uh, one amount but actually uh, uh, the real prices were different at the vendor and by vendor I mean the shops that sold those and so what was the reaction when you brought in a centralized system as normal with all changes people resisted they get an angry they were upset because uh, it meant that uh, uh, they, you know, they had lost their, uh, their little, what they call in Liberia, one, two, one, two. And, and no one would like that. I guess I'm going to be asked later what one, two, one, two means. It's just a, a local, uh, little corrupt, when you get your little corrupt thing on what they call on the side they call it one two one two <clears throat> now did these uh or your control extend to, for example, government vehicles and the use of them? Yes. Everything. Government vehicles. <clears throat> and in seeking to control their use, did you come up against any particular opposition? Oh, yes. Can you explain that <clears throat> to us, please? Before the revolution, a vehicle assigned to an official, a government purchased vehicle assigned to an official of government virtually became his personal property. Uh, in the United States, GSA vehicles are marked, they are government property. In Liberia, it was virtually your property. I then decided that what we would do, we will mark the vehicles. I had even gone to the extent to say that after working hours, the vehicles should be parked. That was a no-no, oh, no-no to that. But the president, uh, and by president I mean uh, the chairman of the council took the title on as president. So I'm referring to Samuel Kayando, and presidents before him took what you call uh, trips around the country to hold executive council meetings. This is one of those meetings uh, that I escorted uh, the late President Talbot on, the same kind of meeting. Now, but the General Services Agency is responsible 
uh, to making sure that the president on that trip had what he needed to use, whether it was vehicles, um, uh, we took generators, everything that the president had to use, the General Services Administration had to take it on scene uh, to be used. So I, I realized that every time we had to, to take a trip, we had to virtually buy a whole set of four-wheel drive vehicles. And by the end of the trip, whoever got those vehicles, say if the ministers were accompanying the president, he would think that the vehicle assigned to him as minister was, I mean, had to be kept in such mint condition that he couldn't let it go on the bad road. So he needed another vehicle to take him. But upon return, he would try to hold on to that vehicle. So we were just buying vehicles for almost every trip. So, uh, so I went to the, the uh, chairman and I said to him, look, we can afford this. So from now on, when it's time for your trip, all GSA vehicles being used by officials, I don't care who the person is, we will stop them and take the vehicle and use it for the duration of your trip. And so there were, and he backed it, and so uh, there were some little scrimmages from time to time because uh, a day or two before the trip, we would set up roadblocks across the city with the help of the police and uh, take the vehicles. And were people happy to lose their vehicles? Uh, very, way? very unhappy. Very, very, very unhappy. And uh, th that's what I described as uh, scrimmages would occur. Uh, but. Uh, my colleagues uh, in the cap they were majors, and we were all majors, so they couldn't do anything to me. And again, I had the, the authorization of the, of, the, of, of the president, so uh, they just had to complain but stop at some point. But did that make you popular? Very unpopular. Very unpopular. 